Miss. Could their NCAA postseason dreams be on the line right now? They're playing like it. Under 90 seconds to play. We are tied at 59. I mean, it's desperation time for Andy Kennedy. They have not been to the NCAA tournament under Coach Kennedy, despite the fact that they continue to win 20 games. Here they are. They're in a position. They're the last one in, according to Joe Lenardi. Yeah, they're right there. A minute, tie game, minute, eight seconds left. Can they defend well enough? Can they stay in front of this Missouri team? Can they keep them off the board? Bressy got it. His third three for the top of the key. Holloway back to Millinghouse. He'll line it up. He's got a three. What a dancer. Millinghouse has been huge. It's the only way to describe his play. Nine points. All in the last five and a half minutes of this game. Frank Hayes, they want the last shot. They either go to overtime or they win. Oh, my. And the Tigers just threw it away. Nobody was home, and Henderson had it. Now a final shot for Ole Miss. Andy Kennedy will take a timeout. Use Henderson in the way he's coming off. Use him almost as a decoy, because I think other guys will be open. Wide, five seconds. Millinghouse into the lane. His floater. Got it! Derek Millinghouse out of nowhere. He has saved the day, perhaps, for the Ole Miss Rebels and their season. On the streak after the catch here. Two deep. In the air. Intercepted. And guess who intercepted it? The star of this one, Derek Millinghouse. Unbelievable. And Ole Miss has kept their dream alive for the moment. So tomorrow, it shapes up like this. Florida and Alabama. Vanderbilt Ole Miss. Keep yourself in a position to make a play at the end, and, and Derek Millinghouse came in under adverse circumstances. Uh, Jarvis Summers is out with what we believe is a concussion. They're going through tests right now. Uh, so Trill comes in and makes huge plays for us down the stretch. We're a second half team. You can go back to every single one of our games, even games that we won. Um, by a big margin, we played better in the second half. And so, you know, we'll go back, look at the film of the Vanderbilt, and, you know, see how they played lately. And we know they're going to be a tough team. They're going to have the hometown behind them, and, uh, you know, they're good. So, let's we'll be ready to play tomorrow. So, the Rebels of Ole Miss do win their 25th game, and they advance to take on the top seeded Florida Gators tomorrow at 1 o'clock, right here at Richfield Arena. Here's how it looks. Number one against number three. Florida and Ole Miss tomorrow, 1 o'clock noon, local time right here in Nashville. As we check in with Shannon and the winning coach. Yeah, Brad, Andy, you joked with me during the halftime that you only needed to score one more point than Vanderbilt to win the game. You did a lot more than that. What was the key to this win? I like 12 better than one, but I thought there for a minute we may get it back to one. I thought we were much more aggressive. You know, we talked in the hall, Shannon, about third day, and I thought the third day affected Vanderbilt's legs a little bit. That's why we went to that zone. They're a jump shooting team. They were a little bit off, and once we started securing our defensive glass, we were able to get some separation. You do realize you're going to the final game with Marshall Henderson. Can you give us a preview or maybe a warning of what we might see out of him tomorrow? Well, I'll guarantee you this. He'll be animated. He'll be excited about being in the SEC championship. I just hope his teammates follow suit. The good news is you move on to Sunday. The bad news, another sleepless night as you prepare for Florida. See you tomorrow. From Nashville for the SEC tournament crown, here we go.
Head coach Andy Kennedy returns to a vastly different Rebel squad than last year. With the departure of three key seniors, the coach is left with a new team. Well, it is a new team based on the fact that we lost three very valuable seniors. You know, our all-time leading rebounder, a guy that had 23 and 10 in that SEC championship game against Florida and Murphy Holloway, uh, a walking double-double. We lost our all-time leading shot blocker and the fifth best shot blocker in the history of the SEC. Also our third all-time leading rebounder, the winningest player in the history of the program in Reginald Buckner. And then our team MVP, uh, from my perspective, and Nick Williams, the, the voice uh, of reason in the locker room, gave us great leadership on and off the floor. With the departure of those three guys, we're, we've got to have new guys step up in expanded roles. Not only did we bring in a plethora of new players, but the guys that we had from Jarvis Summers, to Snoop White, to Derek Millinghouse, to Martavius Newby, they have to take on expanded roles. Marshall Henderson is our only holdover who really plays the same role that he played for us last year, but he's our lone senior. Uh, and we're bringing back in DeMarco Cox and Aaron Jones, two guys that are coming off really debilitating injuries. So it has been a work in progress to this point, trying to, to forge an identity as a team, and also to get these guys to understand that they are now the big boys in the room. If it is to be, it is up to them to make the necessary plays, and that is a growth process. Evident by multiple heartbreaking losses, the absence of veterans from last year's team has shown in non-conference play. 89-86 Oregon. So the Rebels have a chance. They'll set up a three opportunity here. Summers with three seconds, two seconds. He bombs a three. Got it! Jarvis Summers with point eight. The Rebels have got this game into overtime. Throws the shoulder and banks it up and in. And the Ducks finishing strong. Disappointing loss, obviously, for the Rebels. Time for basketball in Oxford. Daniel Corsi will jump for Mercer and for Ole Miss, Anthony Perez. Quick two or, or three here. Ole Miss out of timeouts. Marshall Henderson tries a three. Got a three! So we're looking at overtime or a walk-off win for the Bears. Langston Hall behind the back for three. And a win! What and the Mercer finish. Bears get it done on the road. 79-76. Tie game with 15 seconds remaining. And an offensive foul called on Summers. Oliver for three. Got it off the window and in <laughs> with point three. And the Flyers pull it off. Well, we're sitting nine and four as we head into SEC play. We're, we're one possession away in all four of those games from be sitting here with a different outcome. But that's basketball. Um, we challenged ourselves in our non-conference. We've put ourselves in a position that I think we've learned a lot about ourselves heading into league play. We lost a one possession game against a Kansas State team who has not lost since and have now forged them way into the top 25. We lost in overtime to an Oregon team who has only suffered one loss and is in the top 20 in the country. Uh, we had two buzzer beaters in our home building. Uh, that's probably been the most discouraging in that we've lost three times in this building in the non-league for the first time in my tenure here and it's very, very important to protect your home floor if you expect to play meaningful basketball deep into March. Uh, but through all of these trials and tribulations, we've had opportunities to play and pick up wins against an ACC opponent in Georgia Tech, against a Big Ten opponent in Penn State, against a team that has been to two straight NCAA tournaments at Western Kentucky. So uh, we've got some wins in our pocket that I think will help us moving forward. But more than anything, the experience should benefit this team as we approach league play. Going to the SEC it was very important that we win our season open because it just set standards that we need to win more games at home. We really wanted to um, come out and get a win for the first um, SEC opener. That's a big deal. You start to see um, the conference play off of the loss, and that just throw your whole momentum off. From Cad Smith Coliseum in Oxford, Mississippi, the Ole Miss Rebels taking on Auburn in the SEC opener for both squads. I think number one, Ole Miss has had a more difficult schedule, a tougher schedule uh, than Auburn has had. And that being said, I think they have done more with this more difficult schedule. Just about set to get started. We're underway in the Tigers' control, the opening tip. 
Rebels are opening in man-to-man -man defense. He gave a great fake and a really quick spin. That was as good an offensive play as you're going to see by a guy in the post. The rebound is Yanari. He puts it up. No, yeah, he got it. It hung and went. Harrell's feeling it. He's hit a couple in a row now, and Auburn pushes his lead to five. <laughs> Millinghouse has 10 points, a couple of three pointers, and an assist, provided some tough defense. And in Marshall Henderson's absence, he stepped up with a solid offensive performance. 31-28, Ole Miss has the lead at the break. With a three-point halftime lead erased by an early run for the Tigers, the Rebels once again had to claw their way back. Saiz cross court to Snoop White. They need some offense out of him, and they get it. That's a huge, huge bucket. 117 to play. Possession arrow is in Ole Miss's favor. Rebels with a 62-59 lead. Canada all the way to the bucket, and Jones blocked the shot. A huge block by Aaron Jones. So at worst, Auburn will need a three to tie. That'll be the biggest free throw he makes this year right there. Canada with Here's it. Here's the three. KT Harrell, pump fake. Harrell for the tie. No. Fight for the rebound. Griffin has it. He tries to get it up. Loose ball on the floor. And the horse bounce. And the Rebels escape with a win. Come on baby. Come on baby. Listen, listen. It's a gutsy win. You're 1-0 in the SEC. And you found a way to grind it out. What I want to impress upon you between now and our next opportunity, and we've got the quickest turn in the league. We've got the quickest turn. We play Saturday afternoon in Starkville, all right? So we have got to, hey, enjoy this. When it's hard, man. Regardless of how you do it, regardless of how you play, regardless of the mistakes that eat me up, and I hope eat you up, because that's the only way you're ever correct it, you got to win, and you got to win in a hard league. And that's the bottom line. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. We have to accept these new roles that we have and, and, and embrace the fact that you're instrumental in winning and losing. That's what I want, embrace it. You diving on the floor may have, may have saved them from having another heave. And the way our luck's been all year, those heaves have been going in, but not tonight. 1-0, and good job. Janari, Janari's MVP. Hey! They changed the game, dog. Yeah, yeah. 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 Let's go. Here we go. Here's what I got. Here's what I got. I got one line right over here. One line right over here. Hey, you got three minutes. Get loose. We're going right to it now. Get loose. We got to go. First blood, man. Get him first. Hey, we're going this way, dog. Pursue it, man. It's a mindset. Got to go get him, man. Block out. Go get the ball. Good news. Oh! Hey, hey, one question. Have you ever seen, have you ever seen, see what Derek did? Come, Kate. Come, Kate. Did you see what Derek did? He kind of went. And he kind of pass blocked him. You ever see that call? Good, good. Keep playing, man. Keep playing. Got to move quicker. Good norm. Good norm. Sometimes we're thinking, whose man is that? Who cares whose man it is? He's getting the ball. If you see him coming, then you got to get your body on him. Seamus, Seamus, what's your greatest strength? Is it your vertical leap? What's the greatest strength you've been blessed with? It ain't your bounce. Stay close. Now go get it. Good, AJ. Good. Get that ball. Oh. Let's go, circle drill, down and back. You know the drill, let's go. Finish that, finish that, finish that. Good, Barrett, that's the way it's gotta be, right there. That's the way it's gotta be right there, every time. Secure it, push, push. Stay up, stay up, Barrett, stay up. Get him, get him, get him. Don't just be there, concentrate, get that ball. Gotta play harder, gotta play harder, gotta communicate. Gotta play harder, guys, you have to play harder. You have to play harder. Step up, Barrett! What are you going, Bear? Turn, Bear, you gotta talk, son, you gotta talk. You gotta talk, stand up, 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 up. Find that ball. Good, Jarvis, good, Jarvis. Pull it, man, pull it. Step to it. Now go get it. Gotta hit him, man, hit him. Good, Jaron, good, Jaron. Shot, shot, get him. Go, 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 go. Here they come, here they come. I got three guys trying to get to the ball. Nobody can get to it. Boom. 
Oh, bounce it off that backboard. Huge play. Can't get to the ball. Quarterbacks probably prepare more than any other position in football, more than any other the quarterback prepares, because he's in charge of not only what he's doing, which is the hardest position, but also what everybody else is supposed to be doing. It's gotta be your mindset. You have to work, prepare more, watch more, they do more. Go get it, block out, block out! Get it, get it! Good, good, hey, open man, next group. Good, there you go! That's what you do, there we go, now we got 202. Dwight, 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 listen, listen, the way you're doing it's not gonna work. Right in your hands, man, you gotta have your eyes open. You gotta play basketball with your eyes open. Embrace hard, embrace hard. Sometimes y'all's people want y'all to play more than you want to play. I, you can't imagine how many phone calls I get about why it's so-and-so playing and y'all don't even want to play. Oh, oh, can't get it, can't get it. Hands are down, hands are down. That's the one right there, Anthony, for you to play college basketball. That's the one you gotta get. Attack, attack, get that gap, get that gap, get that gap. There you go. Just say, free your mind, get to the ball. Free your mind, get to the ball. Hey, let's be as good as we can be. That's all I want. That's all I want. Be as good as we can be. You got to compete like that every time. What's the difference? Somebody gets you mad, and then all of a sudden there's a sense of urgency. That's how we have to play, man. That's how the good teams play. That's how the good teams play. Each and every day, man. It's got to be a real sense. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Back at it. Back at it. Stay in that grind. Hey, stay together. One, two, three. Yeah. yeah. Going on the road in the SEC is never easy. Traveling to your cross-state rival's home court is even more difficult. For their second conference matchup in a 48-hour swing, the Ole Miss Rebels would face the Mississippi State Bulldogs on their home turf. Welcome to the SEC on ESPN. With the college football season complete, the attention of SEC fans turns to college basketball with one of its oldest rivalries, Mississippi, taking on Mississippi State. Great to have you alongside, alongside former SEC coach Darren Horn. I'm Mike Morgan. A great rivalry coming here in early January as Ole Miss and Mississippi State meet off for the first of two meetings on the hardwood. First off here in Starkville, where Mississippi State has been very strong in this rivalry. And Darren, let's start As we start were preparing off. to go in and play at Mississippi State, really the focus was our first true road contest in league play. We have so many guys with expanded roles, as we talked about earlier, and also some freshmen that had never been in that environment. Uh, obviously, it, there, there's some added emotion when you talk about an in-state rival. But for us, it was just the challenge of being prepared to go on the road and play without your leading score in your first road contest in the SEC. Ole Miss in navy blue, Mississippi State, the home team in gray. And again, the Bulldogs have won the last four against the Rebels in this building. Ware jumping center against Jones. Ware wins it. Bulldogs have it. We're underway from the hump. This is Summers. Shot clock at 10. And from the corner, a three ball is good for Millinghouse. Red Thomas can't convert on the other end. How about another three? Almost an instant replay for Derek Millinghouse. Another open three, and that's a guy you don't want to leave open. Jarvis Summers stays hacking it back inside now on the 2 3. Shot clock at six, and White drains it from 15. Put that shot, definitely not bashful. Tough shot by Summers, count the basket and the foul. What a shot by Jarvis Summers, who against the Dayton Flyers just a week ago had a career high 29. The Rebels had the hot hand early. But as with any road game, keeping the momentum is a tall task. Down low, it's the big man Ware. Nice play. Borkert's got it. And finishes, plus the foul. A chance for three the hard way for Laquez Johnson. One-on-one -on -one play by White. Wow, right between the eyes of Bloodman on the tray. 
Offensive rebound and flush for the Rebels. Gets it to go on the drop. Anthony Perez, the sophomore by way of Venezuela. Where rejected by Perez. Two on one. Billinghouse gets the bucket. A 12-0 run for the Rebels. The Rebels have dominated this half, but the last couple of minutes have belonged to the Bulldogs. Summers off a curl. Got it! A silencer! Despite a valiant effort in a hostile environment, the Rebels could not hold on for the ever so valuable road win. Clock winding down. Need to fire it quickly. Bulldogs do it again. Five in a row over the Rebels in the hump. Mississippi State improves to 11 and 4, 1 and 1 in the Southeastern Conference. Your final score in the Bulldogs. We've got to make timely shots, limit turnovers, do a good job on your glass. Our first shot defense has been pretty consistent. We've got to try to hold people under that 42% threshold defensively and then make timely shots. You know, we're a group that's scoring in the high 70s, but really more than the volume of those points, we've got to make timely shots because ultimately it comes down to making plays to win in this league.